<laughs> well, hi there, food friends. It's Kevin. Hey, I'm Ralph behind the camera. And welcome to Cavalcade of Food. And today, Ralph, we're going to make a zucchini casserole. You had How me. about that? You had me at casserole. <laughs> and you're keeping me with zucchini because I do love all the fun things one can do with a zucchini. Well, it's that time of year again when the zucchini's coming in. I don't know if uh, you and perhaps some of our food friends might remember that last summer we made these zucchini burgers. Right. Do you remember that? So um, my neighbor, Lloyd, came over with a zucchini the other day. Look at this thing. That's a prize winner. Um, and it's like, what am I going to do? Uh, zucchini bread, zucchini burgers, um, and I love zucchini. And the thing is, when the zucchini is large like this, um, it can be a little on the tough side. The skin is definitely tough mm. because it gets thick as the zucchini grows. So I wanted to to do something that would um, uh, maybe use the zucchini in a way that it would get tenderized a little oh, bit. So a casserole. So we're going to do a zucchini casserole, which calls for grinding the zucchini. Wow. Okay. And to, to aid us in that, I got a sprinkler. <laughs> no, what is it? A grinder? This is a rival grind o mat. Ah, that looks old. This, this is an oldie, and this is a tabletop model. They also made ones that kind of clamped on, and some of them are uh, you can use for meat, like to make sausage and such. This one um, is designed for grinding all kinds of food. Uh, so anyways, we're going to give this a try as we grind our zucchini. But what I want to do first, Ralph, is I'm going to cut the ends and we're going to have to peel this bad boy. Oh yeah. Okay? Because that peel, you can see, is on the thick side. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my peeler and we're going to go down and I'm going to peel the zucchini. Then what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to have the zucchini lengthwise. And when zucchini or summer squash are young and tender, the seeds are very small. Um, but when the zucchini gets this size, the seeds can get quite large and they're bitter. So I'll probably de-seed it. I'll probably scrape the seeds out. But we'll see what that's like. But I'm going to finish peeling this and then we'll cut it and I'll chunk it up and we'll get it in the grinder and we'll start making our ground zucchini for our zucchini casserole. Um, if you didn't have a grinder like this, you could certainly just chop it up very finely by hand or use a food processor. So you're just using a regular potato peeler? I'm using just a regular uh, vegetable, yeah, potato peeler to take the skin off of this. And then is the skin of any use? Like, can you do anything fun with the... <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> That's so me, isn't it? Um, it is. I know you don't like to waste anything. All right. But really, this the skin <laughs> on, on this big old zucchini is too tough. And it's going to be of no use. It'll be, you know what? It would be great in the compost pile. Oh, okay. There, there you, go. you go. So if you really, we want to do something with it, that would be a great place for it. All right. We'll be right back. So here's the, see the seeds here? I'm yeah. going to scrape some of those out. Uh, and we can just use a, a spoon and kind of get some of those. There's a lot of seeds in here. They come out easily like a pumpkin. Yeah, they do. They just kind of just sort of scrape down. Now, could we could we roast them like a pumpkin seed? Well, I or guess too... here, that's what they're like. But they're not, yeah, they're very right. thin. The pumpkin seeds are yeah, more have substantial. Yeah, have more of a pulp. Yeah. But, okay, well, we'll just I'm gonna, add that to the compost. Yeah, I'm going to take this out like this again now if you were using again a thin small young 
right. uh, zucchini. You wouldn't have all. No, those. it wouldn't even be necessary because those seeds are so light. Are, are, you, you wouldn't even know they're there. But but these are just a little too big. Yeah, that's so right. So I'm going to take them out. They'll go into we'll the go. compost, and what's the worst that could happen? You get a, a zucchini tree growing. <laughs> Right, exactly. That that might that's very likely. An Audrey too. So, okay. So now we've got our zucchini seeds kind of out. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to slice the zucchini up into smaller pieces here and start grinding. Okay. So here we go. I've, I gave this a good cleaning. And I'm gonna see. You might need more to push through. Yeah, I think I'm. There we go. I, I I'm learning. I need to cut the pieces a little smaller, but it's coming through, isn't it? It's getting kind of wet too. Yeah. So, Hopefully. you know, zucchini, especially, although all vegetables are mostly water, um, and so we're gonna have a lot of liquid, which will drain. But I'm gonna go ahead. And keep chopping. Hey, Kevin. Yes. I think you should put more in there, and then get your Play-Doh pusher, and push it down with your. Did you save your Play-Doh? No. Fun from fact, Play-Doh. <laughs> I didn't, don't. Did, I, yes, I don't have it. Didn't it have like a pushing thing you it could did. push the? Yes. <laughs> Although I do have a, a wooden spoon, so your fingers you know, don't go thing, in there. A thing for the like a, a, the, a meat grinder that oh. you a pusher, but um, yeah, I will. Uh, we're going to get this chopped you could, up. You could, well, for our friends at home, too, they could just use a, a wooden spoon. I'm just thinking of safety first. Yeah, the, um, the, the blades are up here. The part, the, the auger that kind of takes the oh, zucchini it in. even near your fingers. It's not near my fingers, and okay. it's not. So I'm not worried about my fingers getting ground up, but thank you. But <laughs> we're going to do it like this. Okay. Okay. So should I... Uh, come back after you've done that a few times yeah I'm gonna get all this ground up and then we'll come back sounds good this is fun hey that's not the green zucchini <laughs> no this is a yellow summer squash but let me tell you something let's show our friends so I ground up that whole giant zucchini and this is what I got mm. and I think I'm about a cup short oh okay. I need five cups you'll notice there's a lot of liquid in there too and we're gonna squeeze that out before we use it but um I had another thing that he brought over were a couple of these yellow summer squashes, which I love. Um, and so I'm going to grind one up so that I can get my five cups of squash. So the moral of the story here is you can use all zucchini if you have it, or you can use a combination of zucchini and yellow squash, or I'm making a pretty big recipe. This recipe you could cut in half very easily and instead of needing five cups of, of zucchini, uh, you could do it with two and a half cups. But yeah, I was going to tell our friends this is going out directly to a, a safe outdoor gathering so we, yes. we have to make enough for at least eight people but if you were wanting to make this recipe and only serve a regular size family you could do half easily so let me get this yellow squash ground up oh there it goes look at that and no one will be the wiser well it'll be yellow so maybe we'll call this a squash medley casserole instead but anyways we'll get we'll be back when we've got all this ground up we're old enough to remember when zucchini started to become Kind of a health food alternative. Remember when zucchini bread was all the rage? All the rage. And then people started doing things with other things with zucchini, like those patties we talked about that we made. A very, zucchini to me is a very 70s thing. I mean, it was certainly around long before the 70s and it's still popular, but it seemed like zucchini kind of fell into its own in the 70s. Well, yeah, people just started to be kind of awakened to all the possibilities. And then, of course, there was that spaghetti squash craze. Yeah. And I tried um, buying some of that. It was kind of more expensive than I thought it would be. I think, um, and, and you know, I think this recipe comes from that era, Ralph, because I think in the 70s there was um, kind of a, a movement to go back to more natural Simple life. Um, foods, get away from... 
you know, in the 50s and 60s, we had all these really highly processed kinds of foods. Right, convenience was the key yeah. word, and so, so fast um, food, processed food. But, but in the 70s, it was like, no, you know, that was when the natural food movement kind of started to take hold because the, the Alice Waters and all of that the stuff. The 60s introduced a lot of that, but then it didn't take hold yeah. in the mainstream till the 70s. But anyway, so, getting back to our casserole. So, by the way, uh, here's the zucchini and yellow squash. What I did is I squeezed, I squeezed, um, I had it all in the bowl from the grinder. L look how beautifully it ground up. And then I squeezed it. I took a cup at a time and I put it in a clean towel, cotton towel, and over the sink and I just wrung it out and boy, it got rid of a lot of that water. So did you squeeze it or what has it been squoze? It was squoze. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to make a white sauce uh, to go with this. So what I have here, Ralph, is in this pot, I just melted six tablespoons of butter. Okay, now I've got six tablespoons of flour. And I have salt a teaspoon and a half or or one teaspoon of salt a half a teaspoon of pepper and a pinch of cayenne okay pinch, we're going to put all that in and we're going to cook that flour so that's a roux you, yes you're correct that's a roux awakening that is a roux we're going to put that in there Gosh, and we want to we want all those flour lumps to cook out Okay, and get smooth. And we don't want it to get too, too dark because it's going to be a... In the oven as well. A white sauce. Plus, isn't it going on the casserole that's going in the oven? Yes, we're going to mix this in with the zucchini. So you don't want to overcook it so, at this point. just want to get the flour cooked. Yeah, we got the flour cooked. You want to make sure there's no lumps in the flour. So this would be like a constant stir. Yes. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add four cups of milk, okay? slowly. The milk, by the way, should not be like ice cold. Let it sit out for a half an hour or so. And we're going to slowly put a little of this milk in. And I'm actually going to switch to a whisk. Because when you're making a white sauce, you've got, it's going to start to, that, that, that flour is, and butter is going to start to come together in little clumps. And you don't want it to clump. So put in a little milk and whisk it smooth, put in a little more milk and whisk it smooth and that way if you keep if you put the milk in a little at a time and keep whisking making sure that all those lumps are gone you won't get a lumpy you won't get a lumpy sauce and then what we want to do is we're going to bring this slowly back up to a boil and until it thickens okay now we've been making cavalcade of food recipes for our friends for a number of years now and I remember one of the first times we made a casserole I said I'm waiting for somebody to open a restaurant called Mama Casserole. So <laughs> just want you to all and know I'm still waiting. Still waiting where they just serve casseroles. Yes. Cause I think I, I'd be the first in line. That's some good comfort food. Okay we're gonna we're gonna bring this uh, back up to a boil or a low boil and that will thicken up and we'll have our white sauce in the whoop <laughs> don't drop your whisk in there that's my advice. that's extra flavor um, in the meantime I've got a casserole dish you're gonna need about a three at least a three quart casserole this is probably more of a four quart this might be a little bigger than I need but I couldn't with all the stuff I have here, yeah. I couldn't find a three-quart right. casserole. Yeah. Are you how could kidding you, me? How could you find something? I mean, you know, um, I, I pr maybe it's still in the back somewhere, but out on the floor, I had two-quart, one-and-a-half-quart. Anyway, so I'm going to use this, but I'm going to give this a spray first with baking spray, and we'll get that ready. And once this white sauce is ready to go... Uh, this cream sauce, we will mix it in, get it all put together. I've got the 51 Calvinator preheated 350 degrees. It has come up back to a bubble, and look how nice and thick it is. 
Yummy. Okay, I'm actually going to take that off the heat. And here we have that nice, you can see, nice white sauce. Kind of a medium, I would say, in terms of thickness. But that's just what we want. Now, to the white sauce, I'm going to add, um, I've got a teaspoon of salt. I've got a half a teaspoon of pepper, and I've got a teaspoon of celery seed, okay? That's kind of the little secret ingredient here, okay? The celery seed? Yeah. You know, if you think about zucchini um, or even summer squash, on its own it doesn't have a ton of flavor. But the, the salt, the pepper, and the celery seed will flavor it up nicely. Okay, now we're going to put our squash in there. And I'm going to stir that in. And get it all coated with the white sauce. Now I've greased the casserole dish. So, mm-mm-mm. Let's whoop. I don't know if you can get that, Ralph, but. How about a spatula? You read my mind. Gonna, because we want all of that goodness. Spatch it out. Okay. Then. Get that in. Now, what we're going to do is I've got three quarters of a cup of Parmesan cheese here. Parmesan cheese, okay. And we are going to just sprinkle that over the top. I can tell already this is going to be a hit at a garden party. Well, I think it's something different. It's uh, different and it's it speaks to the summertime. You know, and it's a, it's a nice side dish. And uh, for people who maybe are more on the vegetarian side, it's not vegan, uh, but it is vegetarian. You could okay. add bacon though if you want it. And <laughs> then, yeah, then I've got over the um, over the the, the, the three top. quarter cup of Parmesan, I've got a cup and a half here of panko breadcrumbs. Okay. And we're gonna just put those over the top, so it's gonna it's like kind of make up white on white on white. This is another thing that makes it seem kind of summery. You know, different colors express different seasons. Yes, and it's very light looking. Yes, isn't it? and it, it looks very summery and light. Now, if you wanted to, you could sprinkle a little paprika or something on top. Oh yeah, you know. Um, let me just look in the old cupboard here and see if I that might be fun if I have some. Um, of course, you know when you want something. <laughs> well, good luck Kevin, finding it. also it's gonna yep. it's gonna be toasted when you it bake will it, be. so it, it'll take on a little coloration. Um, shucks, you know when I don't have any paprika, yeah. at least not that I can. That's all right. Lay my hands on. It's all right. But it's um, a thought. If you were making this yes. and you wanted to add a little color, add some paprika. Yep. So. We're going to put it in and we're going to bake this for about a half an hour. Uh, but we want it to just be sort of golden and bubbly on the top. Got it. Okay? So, in it goes. And that's it. Let's see. Where's my. 350. Set the timer. And. For 30 minutes. 30 minutes. And we'll see you when it comes out. Ralph, it's been 35 minutes. Oh, the is, smell. Is it bubbling and toasty it's looking? It's bubbling and golden and brown. toasty. Look at that. You see those bubbles? Looks a little jiggly as it's supposed to be. Well, It'll cool. here's why. It is very, very hot. Way too hot to eat or serve. So what we're going to do... We're going to have to, as much as we'd love to dig in. You know I would. Um, we're going to have to just stop in the name of love for zucchini. 
and let this baby cool off a little bit. And can I tell you something? Please do. I'm going to enjoy the smells while we're waiting for it to cool. It smells so yummy. It smells it does. really buttery, creamy, cheesy. Yeah. So an eternity later, <laughs> it seems like it. Uh, more like. 15, 20 minutes later. Oh, is that all? Um, it's cooled down, and uh, I think it's set up a little bit. So what I'm going to do is, again, we're not going to take a big thing out of here. Oh, look at that layer of cheese there. Mm. Um, we're going to try to be subtle about this. That's enough. And then um, just get the Elmer's glue out and paste it. <laughs> Glue it all, Glue it. Push it all back we'll, down. We'll, we'll kind of let that, it'll, it'll, no one it'll know. fill itself in. So, look at that. It looks, um, um, I don't think it's still too hot. It might, well, you mean because it's a little loose? It's loose and it, I can see the steam coming. I mean, can too you, hot I for can't me. I can from, from my angle. Well, I, I know you can take hotter stuff than me. I don't want to burn my mouth, but... Um, and you know, there's no eggs in it. It looks custardy. There's no eggs in but it, it's, um, but it's, well, it's that white sauce. Is it yummy? Mm-hmm. It's, uh, you know, you get the texture of the zucchini, mm -hmm. the squash. You get the flavor from the cheese. Um, the zucchini is soft, of course, but the breadcrumbs give it that crunch. Okay. And then you have just you get that hint you know celery seed is such a unique flavor um and you definitely taste it right, I'm gonna it's not overpowering though i'm going in um it's not as hot as it i mean i don't think it's that i mean it's hot but it's not scalding mm. right yes yeah i'm getting the actually the flavor of the squash which i love uh-huh getting the cheesiness Getting that, mm, that butteriness. Are you getting the celery seed? Not quite. I'm getting um. It's real subtle in the background. Yeah, but I am you getting, can put more in there. I, I mean, but celery seed could overpower. I love the crunch, like you're saying, of the of the breadcrumbs. Mm -hmm. Plus the toastiness gives it a nice flavor. Yeah, but yeah, it's really it's definitely retaining the squashy flavor, which yeah. I love. Yeah, we didn't lose this. We didn't lose the squash. So. So whether there you it call is. it a squash casserole or well, a zucchini maybe, casserole, I'm whatever you call it, it's still delish. <laughs> it, the intent was to do all zucchini, and I thought I would get five cups of zucchini out of that giant um, zucchini, but I came up about a cup short. So I added the yellow squash, which certainly doesn't hurt it any. So call it a zucchini casserole, call it a a mixed squash casserole, whatever you like. Um, I like a, it's a summer squash casserole. Summer squash. Well, it's more zucchini than summer squash, but oh, um, I was thinking of the season more than oh, the actual. a summer squash casserole. <laughs> yeah. Well, there you go. <laughs> summer that, sir, that comma works. squash. Well, right. <laughs> um, so, anyways, it's yummy, and I think there'll be plenty here for our potluck later today and I think it'll be a fun dish. Uh, I'll bet you nobody's had it before. Right. So this is really good. Unique. A nice side dish for the summer. Another great way if you're a gardener and you got zucchini galore, this is a great way uh, to use some of it. You know how to catch a unique dish? How? Unique up on it. <laughs> no extra charge for the jokes, folks. Anyways, we are so glad that you hung out with us and um, helped um, be here as we we made this dish, the zucchini squash, summer squash casserole. Um, we're going to enjoy it. We hope you're enjoying your summer. And if you like what we do here, please share, like, subscribe. And you know what? We'll look forward to seeing you all again. We soon. love your we love your feedback. We love to hear from you. We really do. So we'll um, see you again soon. And like you we said. will see you again soon, right here on Cavalcade of Food. Bye, everybody. Bye for now.